Hello. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Gabby, go ahead. Oh, hi, good morning, everyone. So just a general housekeeping items. First off, I would like to say thank you for joining us today. And we will just wait a few more seconds for everyone to just get settled in at this interactive webinar. However, I would like to note that this is a recorded webinar and all participants will be receiving today's presentation along with if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat and we will answer them. thank you thank you gabby and welcome everyone to the miami-dade business navigator um, webinar on AI and have we got a special presentation for you today. Um, Esteban, our speaker, is from Roar Media and I have to tell you I've attended um, one of his seminars before and you're going to be truly engaged. Uh, feel free to use the chat if you have a question and um, we'll Mostly do that at the end, but if you have a question during, you know, we'll try to stop it and uh, get those questions answered. And I know you're going to have a lot. So the Economic Development Council, uh, I am the executive director of the EDC of South Miami-Dade, and we are working in conjunction with FIU Small Business Department on the Business Navigator Grant. Uh, some of you may already be familiar with this. But um, I want to tell you a little bit about the EDC. So Economic Development Council, a lot of people um, are like, what is that? Is it like a chamber? Um, we're not a chamber, but we do support and um, advocate for anything that enriches the lives of our territory, which is Kendall Drive and South, whether it's workforce development, small business development, um, trainings, uh, new business, um, Sign, you know, bring remaining businesses, keeping them there. So it's kind of hard to say in one sentence what we do. Um, but what we do is um, just make, we want to make South Dade the best place to live, work, and play. So the Business Navigator Program, um, it is funded through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, FIU is the hub and we have six spokes. Um, it was established by the American Rescue Plan, uh, the hub and the spoke I just spoke of. It's $100 million to 51 grantees, and we were blessed enough to be one of those grantees. Um, the goal is to improve long-term economic recovery. Um, I know that when you're a small business, you Google, you know, what's the best bank account? What's How do I do social media? And you will get millions of responses. So what this grant does is it tries to break it down for you, filter out all the stuff you don't need, and we put you on the path to what you do need. Through Ascendus, Miami-Dade Chamber, Branches, Prospera, SBDC, and Startup FIU Procurement, we have pretty much all bases covered in terms of financing, marketing, business plan writing. Um, we have a guy for you, like we like to say. Um, we secured 2.5 million to create the program for Miami-Dade County and, or FIU did. Our focus is to create a strong local community at navigator network. So if you need to pass this on to another business owner, you know, um, if you haven't registered, please register. It does end November 30th. However, um, our assistance will not. Um, we're not just going to say, oh, it's the 30th, we're done. We will continue to follow up and assist and um, make sure that you're on the right path. And Jerry, if you could go back to the previous slide, um, this oh. program is for um, businesses oh, are physically located here in Miami-Dade County, but if your business is located in the Quad County region, Palm Beach, Broward, Monroe County, we'll be more than happy to assist you. If you're located outside of the Quad County region, don't hesitate. You'll have my email address uh, in the chat, and I'll be more than happy to connect you with your local small business resource partner. Because I know that we have some folks from, from, uh, from Arizona, Nevada, Oh, and, wow. um, in other parts of the of, of the state as well. Okay, great. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, no problem. 
Uh, here's the contact information. And again, everyone will get a copy of this presentation. So if you can't scribble it down or take a screenshot right now, not to worry, you will have this information in your hands. And this QR code will sign you up for services. Uh, we then do a, a phone interview and determine exactly where you're at, where you want to go, and what you need to get there. So please sign up if you haven't already. And with that, I'm going to introduce Esteban Bianchi from Roar Media. And I have to tell you guys, you don't want to miss a minute of this. Hello and good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Esteban Bianchi. I'm a paid media director and I'm enthusiast in AI at a media agency here in Miami. Uh, we work with a lot of clients from all sizes, but over the last year or two years, I have become very passionate into uh, this AI stuff that I want to share with you. So without much further ado, let me share my screen so we can start with the presentation. Okay, so here it comes. Right. So last night I was working on my final slides um, and I said, let's do something more Halloween-y. And I asked ChatGPT to create an image of people being spooked by AI. And this is what I got. I got a lot of people running from our robot. And, and that's one of the great things about uh, ChatGPT is that when you, you have uh, a small, uh, like the point of an idea, you can start working with it and, and start working and working to get to where you want. I didn't have much time because it was late last night and I had things to do. So this is the image I created, but probably with, a, with 30 more minutes, uh, I could have created uh, something uh, bigger. I have a few raised hands, uh, I see. Um, we will try to, because there's a lot of people here in the audience, if you have questions, uh, you can put them in the chat. And by the end of the meeting, we have a final uh, Q&A session. Um, okay, uh, yeah, by, by the end of the meeting, all the questions that I have not answered in my presentation, uh, we can work with that. We have a few minutes uh, dedicated to that. So today we're gonna talk about what AI, AI is and isn't. Uh, why does AI matter? Uh, how do, what AI can, tools can I use? How do I use text AI tools? Those are the more important today. And we're gonna do a workshop. We're gonna do a live chat GPT session so you can see uh, what we can do with chat GPT. So let me. Okay, the problem here is I'm not in full screen. Give me one second. Okay, well. So, first of all, what is AI? AI refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think learn and make decisions. So we program computers to think like humans, to use the same process of thinking like human uses. What we're gonna be talking today and what you usually hear when you hear about AI is generative AI. That is the possibility to create new things, not only uh, use the AI to sort existing thing or classifying data, the generative AI can produce original outputs of things that did not exist before, text, images, things that come explicitly out of the mind of the AI. It's using chatbots, we can use it in marketing, we can use it for creative applications. And one thing to like not be spooked about AI is to define what AI isn't. AI is not a replacement for human jobs. AI will not replace human jobs. It can handle repetitive tasks. It can free humans for more creative and complex work, but the human has to be on the steering wheel for the AI to work. When the human is not there um, to give the AI direction, the AI sucks. So AI will not replace human jobs. It will make human jobs more efficient because things that maybe took two hours in the past, 
now can take 20 minutes and will free you to do a lot more stuff. So it's not going to replace your job. It's going to improve how you work. AI is too complex for small businesses. And the reality is that as you're going to see today, it's very easy. If you know how to write and if you know what you want, you can get it out of the AI because the interfacing with AI is really easy. And finally, AI is expensive. You see, uh, there's a lot of computing power uh, that we need to use AI. There's a lot of com like very expensive computers. You may think that this is expensive. And the reality is that this is actually either free or very cost effective. Like uh, ChatGPT, that is the tool that we are going to mainly see today. It's only $20 a month for the premium version, but it has a free version that you can use to generate text and that it works amazingly. So why does AI matter to your business? First, because it gives you a competitive advantage. If you adopt AI today, you will have an advantage against your competition that if they don't, if they are not using it, you have an edge. You have an edge because you can produce faster. You can, for example, if you're doing your Instagram post for the week, you can do that probably in the morning when other businesses may take the entire day. So that's getting an advantage. You can use the afternoon for something else. So that's a really great advantage. Second, related with the first one, is efficiency and productivity. You are more efficient. You are more productive. Uh, it's like hiring another person. It's like having an assistant that works with you without having to do that. You're more efficient. You're able to take to make data-driven decisions. We are not going to be talking about those kind of tools today, but you can use other tools in AI to analyze sets of data to provide you with insights. It can uh, make predictions. It, might, it can give you all the information you need to make informed decisions regarding your, your plans, regarding your business plans, your media plans, everything that is related with data. There are a set of tools that we are not going to be covering today, but that you can uh, certainly take advantage to. And finally, scalability. AI solutions will and can grow with your business. You are small today. Uh, you just need a very small set of stuff. But when you grow and as you grow, AI and AI tools are going to be growing with you and going to be providing you with what you need. Very big companies uh, are using AI and the same AI, AI tools are available for you. So what is ChatGPT? And I, I will talk a lot about ChatGPT today because it's the, probably the one that you see on the media, the one that your friends talk about, the one that you probably are using today. Uh, and ChatGPT is a tool by OpenAI. OpenAI is the leading uh, in, in, in AI generation that can generate text conversations, but also works with images now. As of last week, or I, I think uh, three weeks past, at uh, the beginning of October, ChatGPT started generating images. And this one on the right is an image generated by ChatGPT. I asked the AI to generate an image uh, of a person trying to write and an AI helping that person to with ideas. Because I, th I think I saw a question at the very beginning, like, can we use the text that ChatGPT gives us uh, outright, or do we need to do something with that text? You can use it outright. There is not a legal issue uh, with using that outright. But the problem is that you need to make it sound human. You need to tinker it a little bit. You make you need to make it yours uh, for you to be able to not legally use it because you can use it as it comes, but to own it and to make it feel yours. So people can feel like there is a person on the other side and not a robot. So you can do content creation, but I prefer to do content ideation. When you have a blank page and you have that cursor blinking and you don't know what, what to write, ChatGPT can help you with a really big idea that you may not think on your own and you can work based on that. You can do simply image creation like the one you see here or the one with the robots that you saw at the very beginning. You can do it to do research kickoff. For example, if you're trying to research I don't know, um, how to do something or how something was done in the past or something like that is great. And I say kick off because ChatGPT has a tendency to not be very great with factual data. So everything that ChatGPT tells you in terms of facts 
of data, you should go out there, Google, and try to get from Wikipedia or get from another source a confirmation that what ChatGPT is saying is like factual, actual. So if you are using this uh, for something that you need to deliver to someone else, I would tell you to, to, to try to check it. Translations, ChatGPT is great at translations. Uh, we work usually with many languages and we need to like communicate with other people that do not speak either Spanish or English. There are the languages that I do speak, uh, for example, Portuguese, and I use it to, to translate. And again, proofing emails. If you are writing an email, in a tone that you usually don't handle. For example, I'm not very great at writing on formal English, for example, because English is my second language. So what I do is I write it in the way I can, and I throw it into ChatGPT to be turned into a more formal English. And I tinker with it a little bit to make it mine, but it helps me uh, with that proofing of the email. So, Let's dive into it. How do you use ChatGPT? I'm going fast because I want to leave a lot of time for the workshop and for the Q&A, uh, finally. And the text-based uh, AIs, like for example, ChatGPT, work based on prompts. Prompt is a question or a statement that you use to instruct the AI on what you want it to do. It's what you write on the text field and what you ask the AI to do it. And good prompts matter because it's are going to give you accurate results, efficient interaction, and better, it's a customer engagement, but better uh, workflow with the AI. And prompting is very important because the AI is something very weird. It's highly intelligent. It can read, it can parse any language in the world, English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Japanese, any language in the world. It possesses the knowledge of the entire internet, but at the same time, it's really stupid. It will make a lot of its mistakes if you don't give it very specific instructions. For example, there was a joke many years ago that a person bought a robot that will help him doing the groceries. And it sends the robot to the grocery store and it tells, go to the grocery store, uh, get a gallon of milk, and if they have eggs, bring 18. Half an hour later, the robot is back, and it has 18 gallons of milk. The person asks, why do you have 18 gallons of milk? And the robot responds, uh, because they had eggs. So it's going to be sometimes a little bit linear. It's going to be sometimes a little bit literal, and it's very weird to tell jokes without people laughing. But... Um, you have to be very clear on what you want, because if you ask the way that this person asks, you probably are going to get 18 gallons of milk and you probably don't want that. So um, to be uh, prompting great, you have to follow the three C's. You have to be clear and specific. You have to provide enough background information in the form of context. You have to ask and you have to tell ChatGPT what you want and why you want it and what is the context of what you're trying to do. And you have to be concise. If you throw there a prompt with, I don't know, a thousand words, that is not going to work. The AI is going to get very confused. So going into the examples, I prompted uh, a while back uh, the AI to write something for Thanksgiving. I thought of a person that was trying to get an Instagram post uh, for a bakery and went into the AI. And instead of saying an Instagram post, it said, write something, something for Thanksgiving. And this is something that happens. I have some people that have told me, no, the AI doesn't work. I was trying to get an Instagram post for Thanksgiving. And I asked, and I got a Thanksgiving jail. Uh, and this is very relevant. It got, it, it got us, a, it got us a, a text, a tale that is not relevant for us, but it's not relevant for us because we didn't ask properly. Uh, was, we, were, we were too vague uh, with that prompt. Um, I didn't specify the chunk or the style of what I wanted, and I didn't provide any context about the target audience or the purpose, what I, what I was needing this for. So I did it again. I did a prompt saying, craft a warm and heartfelt Instagram post for a small baker's audience, celebrating Thanksgiving and promoting our special pumpkin pie. This provided a clear context, 
It was an Instagram post for a small bakery. It specified the tone, it was warm and heartfelt, and it gave a clear objective, promoting the pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. And we got the text that we got on the right. So we got a special offer. And here, if you read this, it's still going to sound a little bit robotic. If you're used to, to read an Instagram post, it's still gonna sound a little bit robotic. Uh, maybe it's too long. Maybe you need to shorten it. That, that's where you come in. You copy this, you throw that into Word or your Word processor, and you start editing it and making it yours. But this text that ChatGPT is giving you probably saved you uh, half an hour of work of, of writing. You can continue. You can continue giving it examples, for example. You can uh, copy 10 previous posts that you generated on Instagram and tell it these are examples of what I usually write on Instagram. Please create a new post for this. So it's going to copy your tone and work based on your tone. The bigger the context, the bigger the examples that you provide, the better that the output is going to be. So let's try and go uh, to ChatGPT and play a little bit with the tool. Um, I'm gonna open the Zoom chat here because I don't see the chat. Give me one second. Where's the Q&A? Q&A, here it is. Well, we don't have any open questions, but what I want you to do in the chat, if you can, uh, I want anyone to raise their hand to work together with someone uh, on content for their small business. So if you can raise your hand, I will allow you to talk and we can work together on some content or something for your page. So I'm scrolling and I see that Olga has, oh, I have a lot of hands. So I'm gonna start with Olga that raised her hands but first and you're allowed to talk. Hello, Olga. Hello, Esteban, thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, so I would like to write a post about how family constellations would be beneficial to you, to a customer. Family, family what? Family constellations. It's, can you tell me a little bit about that so we can tell the, the AI? Uh, family Constellations is a systemic tool that looks at the ancestry and how the ancestry mm -hmm. might be influencing you today in autopilot or subconsciously to act in a way you don't understand and maybe it's blocking you from acting as an original self instead of copying from the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first we're going to ask ChatGPT, and I think this is great, if it knows what family constellations are. So let's go with it. You're seeing my screen, right? Yes. So do you feel like what we are seeing here is something relevant that like understands uh, what you represent as family constellations? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to let it finish. And this is one thing that we can learn from it. When you don't give it uh, such a context, it's going to write a lot. <laughs> we don't want it writing a lot because it's, it's too long. So what we are going to do is, can you please write a short, Facebook post um, about why the family constellations are important. And we're going to say that you do this for a living, right? Like you sell uh, this service, right? Sessions, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is for a person named Olga that provides this service to families. Where? Where are you located? Uh, I'm in, in Merita, Georgia, in Georgia. In Georgia. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay. 
So this is the first version. And you can do two things with, uh, with this. You can either use it as it is, three things. I wouldn't recommend that because this is too rough. This, is, this has nothing uh, probably from your tone or, or what you usually communicate. Uh, you can use this. You can start editing it by yourself and you, or you can continue providing context and information uh, that, that I don't have now to the AI so it can improve. But what we are going to do to continue with this, I'm going to copy this and create a new chat. And I will say, consider this post. And create an image to illustrate it. This is ChatGPT 4. As you see here, it says ChatGPT Plus because it's the paid version of ChatGPT that will be able to create images and to illustrate uh, concepts and, 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 and images on the uh, platform. So it will create an image. I think it. It's not creating the image, but it will have to be more, more explicit. So I will stop it. So only the plus version of GPT will create me an image. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Please use DAL E, that is the, the engine to create the images to generate an image. And there we see that it's created an image. That is going to take uh, a little bit of time, probably a minute or two. In the meantime, I will read the chat. Oh yeah, absolutely, Lisa. You can uh, create a fun but classy script. We can work on that right away. That's can I see the image? Yeah, what? Yeah, there wow, we go. it's beautiful. It's something. It, it's something. But we can keep working. Like, what would you like to like uh, transform from this image, or what do you think that it um, represents, and what is wrong with this image? I think it lacks the benefit, the, the uh, image of the benefit to a person. It lacks you, the benefit to a person. You have to think that this is a representation, that it's not gonna have everything, but let's see. Uh -huh. Let's see what happens when I ask for, for it to add that. Uh -huh. Alexa ask if this meeting being recorded. Yeah, it's being recorded. Uh, probably you're gonna get that, but I don't handle that. We will have to see with the organizers. I don't know. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, our really... participants will, will be receiving the presentation and the recording. That's great. The good thing is that you you can create, uh, I think it's an unlimited number of images, but there is a limitation on, I think, 20 or 30 per hour. Um, you cannot do more than that. So here, what we see is that the arrows are towards the person. So you see uh, what I think is the family and everything is connected to the person and trying probably to improve the person. It um, is amazing. So this is something that you can do. I will download the image uh, so to have them. And if you send wow. me an email, uh, um, I will put my email at the end of the presentation. I will I will give you the images to you so you can start working with that. Yes. Okay, thank you, Olga, uh, for raising your hand uh, and coming here. Um, thank you so I'm... much. No, no problem. So I'm going to close this. Okay. Great. Um, I have a question on the Q&A, but I will, I, I will answer that when we get to the Q&A. We had Molly, no, sorry, we had, who was, yeah, Lisa was with the uh, marriage, but first I want to answer a question here that says, what about the legal right to use the images? Can I get that without the cost of reach to violate the copywriter? 
Well, the copywriter here is uh, an AI. It is not a person. This, this is not based on a person. If I ask the AI to do that in the style of a living person, it will reject that. For example, if I ask it to do in the style of Matt Groening, the creator of The Simpsons, is going to reject that. If I ask that to be made in the style of Walt Disney World or something that is trademarked, it is going to reject that so to protect privacy. What ChatGPT tells us is that we are free to use commercially any output from the AI. But what I feel more comfortable with when using images for commercial purposes, especially I work in an agency and I sell uh, the content that I create uh, to clients, for example, what I feel more comfortable using is Adobe Firefly or Adobe Photoshop. That, those are the tools in AI created by, by Adobe that do have a license and a contract that specifically allow you to use that. To use that. On DALI or on, on ChatGPT, you'd also have a text on a web page that says that you own that, but I personally feel more confident with Adobe under terms of service. So that's something that regarding legal, I feel more comfortable with. Can you add an extra spreadsheet with expiration date and ask to create email reminders? Uh, you can go at it and you can try, that's more complex, that is not text duration, probably is going to ask you uh, to create uh, and a script on your Excel to send the emails. It is not going to be as difficult as to doing it yourself, but it's going to be something that requires a few steps and it's probably going to take an hour of work, working together back and forth with the AI. So it's not going to be uh, as easy. Olga says, I'm not, only, uh, not able to type in the QA. Yeah, you are perfect. We have the chat there. So I'm going to send you that to you, Olga. And Lisa, well, let's start working. And I'm going to, if you raise your hand, Lisa, I'm going to give you voice so we can, here you are. So we can start working on your speech for the wedding. Hello, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Very good. Okay, let's work on that wedding speech. Are you okay with that? Yes, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> I have I'm, I have no idea what to write. Okay, let's let's kick it off. And again, a, a wedding speech should be something very personal and coming from the heart. So the robot that doesn't have a heart and that doesn't know you, it's probably not going to be as precise as you. But right now, what right. you're dealing with is an empty page, and what the robot can help you with is that empty page. So let me uh, go back to your chat to see if you gave any. Here, I can tell you. Details. Okay, tell so, me, tell me. And so that everybody knows. So my nephew and his wife got married um, during COVID, so they didn't get to have their big wedding. So now they are having their wedding and they asked me to officiate it. And his name is Lucas. I don't know if that's important. And hers is Monica. What is the name of the nephew? Uh, Lucas, L-U-C-A-S. And Monica. Okay, let's do a first draft of uh, and see what happens. I'm gonna say to limit it to hundred words, so it's not too long. Yeah. And let's see what. Well, I don't want to lose the audience. <laughs> Oh, I like that. So it's very important to provide context because that second paragraph, for example, uh, about how their decision to get married during the pandemic, that was a very uh, hard time for all of us, was relevant and was a testament to the law. That is something that like, is working based on a single sentence that we provide. So it, it's really important to provide context. I think this is are really lovely that, that this is something that you can like keep providing yeah. content like for example let's add something to this what what can i add into this um uh so i don't know if this would 
pertain, but so I was thinking maybe, you know, since since they actually did get married, you know, they've come a long way. Like he's moved up in his career, they bought a house, um, mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of good things. A lot more to come and I don't know like the whole idea that they decided to like share this with everybody I think is really touching so here we are going to see how it builds based on that growth for example laying down roots and buying a house that they made into a home a home that's a symbol of their resilience dedication and unwavering love for each other Monica, your grace and strength had been the foundation upon this new chapter has been built. Lucas, your ambition and wavering support has been driving force behind every decision. Maybe that is not right. Maybe it's the no, other way. No, actually, they must know but them. You can work and based on that. So I'm really glad that this is something that will help you break that empty page and that will help you probably build 70% of, of that speech. Um, you don't need to quote. You don't. You don't need to say that you uh, build this based on ChatGPT, but it could be something very funny to mention on your toast or your speech. Um, I really uh, um, hope that this helped. And if you drop your email on the chat, I will send this over to you so you can start to use this and start. But you can of course go into ChatGPT and and use it your own. I will mention one more thing. If you create a new chat here, you're going to see the two options, ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4. ChatGPT 3.5 is a free version. It is not as great as ChatGPT 4. The language models on ChatGPT 4 are way greater. Like the, the, the quality of the content that you get is greater. So if you can afford uh, the $20, I would say to go with it. And also with ChatGPT4, you get the possibility to browse the web. Like you can go, you can tell it to Google, like to not Google, but for to Bing for something, to search some something on the internet and get you real accurate and actual information. Or you can do a, a, the analytics of you can use many plugins that we are not going to explore today. But if you go into plugins, you're going to see that you have, for example, I do a lot of SEO with um, ChatGPT. SEO is improving your website uh, position on Google. So what we do here is we tell the tool to go into our website and tell us what we need to improve in our website to make it better for SEO. Or you can ask OpenTable to make you a recommendation on restaurants nearby you, uh, for example, to go on a date. Or uh, you can use Saper. Saper is another platform that will help you connect ChatGPT with, uh, for example, the spreadsheets and emails and everything. There are a lot of things that you can do here, thousands of plugins that you can explore on your own. Um, ChatGPT4, as I told you, it's way better. And it has the image generation tool uh, right below here. Um, there's a question. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for your time and for... for um, giving us a possibility to to learn about your wedding thing. So there was a question on the Q&A that mentioned, are there any other tools apart from ChatGPT? There are a ton of tools. Like for example, as I mentioned, Michaela, uh, there, there, there is Adobe. Adobe is Photoshop, it's Illustrator is um, Fireflies is another app that they have that you can create images or you can edit images. For example, if you have a picture uh, that you want to remove a person from that picture, you can do that for, with Photoshop. It is not as easy. You need to uh, know Photoshop for, for stars. You need to buy a license that is not as cheap as ChatGPT. I think it runs you uh, a few hundred or no or more a year so it is not as easy. You need more tools, but it's great as well. Most apps online right now are integrating ChatGPT or are integrating AI one way or another. I cannot go through the list of everything. In fact, I gave this presentation for the EDC at Cutler Bay, I think 
a month or two ago, and I included a lot of applications, and I spent 20 or 25 minutes going through applications that were not as powerful or were not as useful for everyone as ChatGPT. That's why I'm going into this. ChatGPT, the good thing is that this incorporating things uh, like every month uh, is incorporating new things. So everything that I say today is going to probably be old uh, a few weeks from now. Um, I encourage you to search, to research, to ask uh, Google, to ask, uh, to, to try and find publications that talk about AI. Now, AI, now that you can understand the basis of it, you can go and find probably tools that are going to help you with it. For example, if you do emails, MailChimp has a platform that not only helps you write emails, but also will help you identify clusters of people in your database that behave one way or another, so you can make decisions based on that. For example, it's going to tell you this 30% of database never open a single email you send. What do you want to do? Unsubscribe them or send them a different email this time to see if they open. So everything there is AI. It seems that it's not, but everything there is AI. So Liliana says, is there any platform that I can use for appointment setter in my business? Yes, there's an amazing one that, that, that even though it has a little bit of AI, it's not plainly AI, but I can help you with that. It's called Calendly. Let me... There you go. So that's the app that you can use. It's a, it's a great app that will connect with your calendar. Either you use Google Calendar or Outlook, and you can send people a link like schedule yourself here. You're gonna find a list of available times and they're gonna be able to, to schedule on their on their own time. So let me finish the presentation because we have to go back to it for a minute. And I will mention the next steps before going into a Q, the proper Q&A. What's next for you and your business? You need to identify a task that can be AI automated on your business. Shop around for the best tool. The best tool is not going to be ChatGPT always. Maybe there is another one that will help you and that will serve you better. Persist and insist until you get what you need. You're probably not going to get it on the first time. Like uh, we got luck today uh, trying with ChatGPT uh, that we got things that we thought were uh, good, but you will need to play a game of ping pong or tennis with the AI back and forth, back and forth until you land on what you need. Rinse and repeat with the next automatable task. You go all the way to the top, you find another task that you can automate, and you can use your new free time to grow your business or relax. So you remember that at the very beginning, uh, the AI was uh, scaring people, spooking people, and everyone, everybody was too frightened and were running. Uh, now we see people very friendly with the AI and taking pictures and playing with it uh, because that's the way it should be. We shouldn't be afraid of it. Uh, AI is not spooky. AI is something that is here to say and that you can use to your best advantage. This image as well was generated with ChatGPT4 uh, uh, to illustrate this presentation. So let's go uh, to answer more questions. We have a few minutes before the closing. And Antonio says, I am looking for an automatic lead generation system with AI capability to answer for those initial leads and do pre-qualification questions based before to contact them in person. Do you know something like that? There is a platform called Outreach that you can throw your leads into it and you can automate a lot of the process with, with emails and, and trying to get questions out of it. There's an AI integration for writing very quick emails, but it's not fully automated. The other thing that you can do is you can work with Intercom, that is a bot that I don't know if it can, it can be used for lead generation, uh, but there is a lot of automation that you can use there. You, you can incorporate a lot of questions to understand if the lead is qualified or not, and if it's good for you. I understand that what you want to do is not spend a lot of time meeting with a person that might not be qualified for what you're selling. Um, I think that I don't know an, a tool specifically designed for that, probably is, but I think somewhere between outreach as a platform for lead management are, and outbound sales and um, intercom, that is something for interaction and live interaction with customer. I think but with, between those two platforms, you can find 
an, an answer. If I didn't respond properly to that, please ask again. So um, Claudia Peter uh, says, is there any way to surpass that a gap that is stopping in 2021? I, I'm gonna, if you're okay with that, I'm gonna give you a microphone so you can maybe clarify your question a little more. Good Hello. afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Well, good morning, Hello, actually. Peter. Yeah, good morning, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. So, you know, it, I every time you're trying to get anything that's more, I will say, um, timeline and you need more information to be more current, it's always getting the same message. Even if you use ChatGPT4, that he has a limitation about the information that he gets inside as a data until 2021, 2022, sometimes if you're gonna go on ChatGPT4. And I was wondering if it's any, any way that we can kind of uh, go a little bit beyond that limitations inside of the data if you know any extension yeah. on chat gpt4 that can uh, bridge that gap that we have in there absolutely the main extension is going to be browse with bing this is going to uh, make it possible for chat gpt to access the internet up to uh, most the most recent information you can ask for example I, i'm going to ask browse the web to see who won the Ballon d'Or because I'm Argentine and I'm going to ask who won the Ballon d'Or yesterday and see what happens because it's something that is not on their training data because it's uh, for uh, 2021 or 2022 the training data cut off it's something that happened yesterday so let's see what we get from, from that And I, I would like to ask you this, if you don't mind, until it's going to generate. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, like, because I'm trying to use a lot of statistical information to understand better the current market, what's going on and everything. And I was just wondering, when, when you do prompts, you know, like based on statistics, based on um, all the information that you have, what do you find so far as the best prompt to use? In gathering information, like say, for instance, for marketing, like uh, what is the, like one of the things that I'm always getting challenged with, is understanding what is the best or or the most, the highest turnaround as a as an email structure, that in the moment you're gonna send it, you're gonna have the highest yield of people that they're gonna be actually opening the email, and um, probably yeah. Sorry, sorry, Peter. So, so I'm just trying to kind of understand, you know, like if you have anything that you found very, like, I would say useful and straight to the point that, you know, it's going to give you like, you know, like maybe some structures that you can use inside of emails, inside of, you know, whatever you see. So based on statistics, based on um, different other, I would say, information that you get to get to the point uh, of, uh, of, of creating something that's actually useful and uh, yes. works. The problem here is that you remember that I mentioned that uh, the AI is highly intelligent, but at the same time, highly stupid. The third thing is that it's highly arrogant as well. So it will never, or it will seldom tell you that it doesn't know yet something. And when it doesn't know something, it will make up something. It will create, it will hallucinate, or it will invent something. And you don't want data to be that way because it won't tell you, I don't know, but this is my best guess it will tell you the open rate for this kind of emails is 22 percent, even though it doesn't know so you shouldn't use that like chat gpt for factual research you should use it for kicking off and for example to you're not going to be able to get information on chat gpt on what a structure of an email or of a subject line is going to give you the best open rate but you can ask it for options and you can put, drop that those options into an A-B testing with MailChimp or the platform that you use for email, measure that, and make informed decisions based on that. So in, in the past, you could do A-B testing with MailChimp, but maybe it was too difficult to come up with five different ideas uh, for subject lines to A-B test. Now you can come up with five different subject ideas in a minute. 
And what I would recommend, if you have a database of 10,000 emails, is sending five examples to 500 uh, people each. So five times five is 2,500. Out of those 2,500, you're going to have a winner. And that winner is going to be the, the best subject line. Send an, send the email with that subject line to the 7,500 uh, remaining. So don't, uh, don't split the entire database. Use a small portion of it, measure with that small portion, and then make, make a decision on, on what to send to the rest. So I think that's, that's a, a good way to make decisions because ChatGPT specifically is not a very, going to be very great at telling you what is going to work better because it, because it cannot predict the future, but also because it doesn't know your database. It doesn't have the knowledge of you that you have from your customers. And uh, just the last question, maybe this one is going to help everybody. Can you train okay. your account, your account inside of the ChatGPT to understand and know your personality to actually teach him how to be more you and if there's any way that you found it useful. So in that way I can like, when I create content or I do anything in ChatGPT is gonna understand me more and better. So it's gonna prompt uh, like it was me on everything he's saying. Yes and no. Everything that you have here on the left on my screen are the previous conversations that I had with um, ChatGPT. Every one of those conversations, it's the context in itself. So for example, if you want to provide ChatGPT with the context of how you write, you should take, I don't know, PDF files or whatever you have that you have written, drop it in the conversation, copy paste or something, and tell ChatGPT, this is how I write. Now write a post or now write a letter or write an email in my tone saying this, and it's going to do it amazingly. Everything that you do inside that conversation, in, in, inside this conversation, is going to have that learning. But if I open a new chat, this is going to be tabula rasa. This is going to be blank slate all over again. You cannot carry learning from one conversation to other conversation. Everything that happens here is not relevant here or here. So you have to train the chat time and time again with what you want to write. That possibility to train a model and use the same model over and over again, it's something right now that is reserved for developers that have access to the uh, OpenAI ChatGPT uh, models and can use it more professionally. I think you can do that with Azure, that is the cloud platform for developers uh, of Microsoft. I haven't used that uh, to, be, to be honest, but it's something that is way more complex than writing on the chat. So if you what you want to do is write on the chat, I will recommend that you build a corpus of, of content, a PDF file with 10 pages or something like that with your writing, and you drop it in the chat every time you want to generate something. Thank you. So thank, thank you. you very much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So Anonymous attendee says, can I use AI for medical research? For example, look at my lab results over the last four years and tell me the progression of kidney disease or also treat me, tell me treatment guidance. I will tell you not. Every doctor will tell you not. For the reason that I just mentioned is that when ChatGPT doesn't know something, it's going to uh, make up a response. And in the past, people used to say, don't Google your symptoms because that is not great to do. You're going to be scared. And I don't want you being scared with a, with a, with a wrong diagnosis. Uh, the reality is that it can probably give you something. And if you are not getting uh, maybe uh, a response from your doctors or something, you can maybe get something out of it. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, or I wouldn't recommend it to do it without a doctor uh, nearby. If you have a doctor and previously to the doctor, you want to understand uh, what your results mean to get, for example, questions to ask the doctor, maybe you can use ChatGPT with that. You get your results, you have a doctor appointment tomorrow, maybe you can drop in your results and ask ChatGPT for questions uh, to ask the doctor so you can go there informed. But I wouldn't do, and I wouldn't use ChatGPT as a 
platform for healthcare without uh, human guidance and a, and a, and a medical guidance. Uh, as usual, uh, ChatGPT and AI is a co-pilot of the human. It shouldn't drive. And, the, and if you don't enough, if you don't know enough about what you're asking uh, to be able to understand and discern where ChatGPT is telling the truth or lying or being wrong, you shouldn't you shouldn't use that. You should bring someone in that maybe can help. I read, for example, examples of people that the doctors wouldn't hit in the nail on the head with what the person had, and the person just dropped in the results, and ChatGPT found one thing that was the key. To be honest, probably there were there's one case of that, and there are a million cases of ChatGPT diagnosing things that make no sense. So just be careful with what you do and always have a doctor by your side. The same thing with legal advice. If you get, I don't know, a cease and desist, or, or if you get, a, I, don't, I don't know, if you have to appear in court and you have to respond something, uh, don't do that with ChatGPT. Call a lawyer. Please call a lawyer and be advised by a lawyer. You can always use ChatGPT to understand what questions you should ask the lawyer, but always have a professional on your side that can help you. So I will go to the chat because I see that there are a lot of things in the chat that were, were in the Q and A. Um, will AI give a different output to the same question? Yeah, all the time. Like every single time, it will give you a different output for the same question because it will create from the from the very beginning. So it will give you a different out, output to the same question. Um, Was to clarify whether or not the images were copyright free? They are copyright free. Uh, they are actually yours uh, for you to create. I will open a copyright open AI. And this is the open AI help center. And it says open AI will not claim copyright over content generated by the API for you or your end users. Please see our terms of use. If you go into the terms of use, you're going to see that the copy right information that there is here some, somewhere over there. But they say it's yours and it belongs to you. So, so you can use that. And Olga asked uh, Irish, which platforms? I think that you, uh, if the question was about uh, if the ChatGPT understands Irish, it probably does. I don't, so I cannot do anything on Irish on, on this platform. So if there are not any more questions, let me see, let me go back to the Q&A. Cool. Here, this one. How much personal data could a platform access when you download and accept the terms of use? Are we exposing our results business to have private content leaking to the public area? Arena of AI research. That's a great question, Lianina. Anything that you don't share with the AI, the AI doesn't have access to it. The ChatGPT is a web page that you don't give access to your computer. It doesn't have access to your files. It doesn't have access to anything that you don't provide. If you don't copy and if you don't upload and if you don't put anything in here, it will not have access. It is not that you they can has, have access to all your documents on your computer. What happens with what you put on ChatGPT is that yes, it can probably, and it will probably be used to further train the AI. One reason for why the ChatGPT has a free version, it's probably to gather information and to keep training the AI on to be better. If that personal data or business data could be accessed or is anonymized or what happened to that information, I don't know. Uh, probably there are some things under privacy policy that cover that, uh, but do not be afraid that everything on, a on your computer is going to be accessed uh, when you accept the terms of use. Just don't share anything that you have maybe any fears of sharing with the AI, because yes, everything that you actually share and you copy paste in this chat can and probably will be used for that for that matter. So let me go back to the chat. Thank you, Eduardo. 
Um, I'll stop share. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. We are, I think, uh, on like uh, our time is over. I don't know if any of the organizers uh, can speak to that. No, you can continue if there's any additional questions or. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing we, we, in the we, we for like a few more minutes. I'm going to be respectful with you. Oh, no, I know how, I know how and it is. And also with the, with the participants as well. I have some more time, but if you want to drop questions in the Q&A, you have a button that says Q&A on the bottom of this Zoom. And if not, you can put it in the webinar chat both ways. I can I can access that. Thank you, Molly, for, for your comment. And thank you, Reda, as well. And also on the time being, uh, and tomorrow and also on Thursday, the EDC also has two additional webinars. So I strongly encourage you to, to participate because that definitely helps and enhances the conversation using the AI in regards of um, starting your business for soft resources and also the um, the legal considerations as well of, of your startup. So it's the next two webinars will definitely enhance tying together from what you learned today as well. So definitely encourage you to participate. Okay, that's great. Um, and I think if there are not any more questions, I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Are there hands-on courses that you teach? No, I don't. Uh, I don't teach. That's not uh, what I do. I, I work on marketing. Um, I don't really think myself myself of someone that is really good at teaching, but thank you, Paula. For, for asking. Um, Olga, I will give you a um, microphone again because I think that maybe I mentioned something that would resemble Irish, but I don't recall. So give me one second that I will try to find you here. Olga? Thank you. You, thought, you talk about two platforms and what I heard was Irish. So kind of a platform or rich or something rich. <laughs> platform, platform for what? Do you remember? Uh, it was something important. And I thought, thought wanted to catch the name on what I could hear was Irish, but I wouldn't know. Outreach, Outreach. yeah. Thank that you, one, Talia. That one, yes. And yeah. then you mentioned another one. Could you write it down, please? Yes, it's Outreach. Oh, Outreach, okay. Outreach, and the other one was called uh, Intercom. So I put that on the chat. Uh, Outreach is a platform for outbound uh, marketing. So uh, sending out emails and calls and handling uh, the workflow of that. And there has it has uh, some AI automations in there to be able to generate content and to create emails for people. And Intercom is a chatbot system that allows you to integrate a chatbot on your website, for example, and have AI answer not only um, to the questions of people, but you can train that chatbot on your own information. So if you have if you have a help center or if you have an FAQ or if you have something that will help the AI answer better, you can train the AI on that information to provide um, uh, great customer service without having people answer 24 seven. So you can free your customer service people to to attend to, to other things. Thank you, John, for, for your comment. And thank you, Olga, for thank coming you. back live. Um, any more questions? If not, I think yep. we can. So yeah. I'm sorry, I just want to ask you if outreach is the same as MailChimp. No, it's it's similar. But it's more focused on um, sending emails to people that didn't subscribe to you, but you're actually trying to sell them. It's a sales platform and not a contact platform. On MailChimp, you cannot send emails to people that didn't uh, sign up for your emails. So that is the difference. Thank you so Thank much. Okay. Anyone else? There are a few hands up, James, uh, Michaela, Michael. I don't know if those were up for questions or for the workshop, uh, but if you want to speak, I can allow you to talk. Michael? 
Uh, James, do you want to talk? Please put that on the chat and I will give you my microphone. Okay, let's see, James. Hello, James. Well, maybe he's away from keyword right now, so. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you, Michael. Um, Jesus, Geraldine, yep. the floor is yours again. All right, so thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. Um, Esteban, thank you for, for an insightful, interactive uh, webinar. But like I said, all participants will be receiving today's presentation and also the recording. And uh, definitely looking forward to seeing the next uh, webinars. So Jerry, do you have any final thoughts before we conclude? Again, uh, I want to echo, thank you for joining us. Um, I know I got a lot out of this seminar again, um, and I hope that you did as well. Again, tomorrow, 10 a.m., we're having our uh, legal considerations uh, webinar. Um, and this is relevant if you are starting a business, if you've already started a business, just tune in. I'm sure that there's some information that you could use. And Esteban, thank you so very much again. I hope everyone has a wonderful Tuesday and happy Halloween. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.